The pages of history come alive at the Maryland Historical Society with the Maryland Historical Society players. One of the ways in which you can really bring artifacts to life, um, uh, really bring the stories to life for people from the past, is to actually have live human beings interpreting the subject. And the traditional way to look at this whole thing is to, uh, is to have a docent, uh, the term we use for museum guides, uh, take people through the exhibits and explain what's going on. But uh, there is a, a movement that's been around for a generation or two in the museum world that's very, very important to me, and that's using actual actors, not only to act and to present uh, little play pieces from uh, the past about particular subjects and particular characters, but also uh, to, uh, to have these actors interpret. In other words, they, they can step out of character and they can um, actually take people around the exhibits. So what we're looking for in our Maryland Historical Society players are actual actor interpreters, people who don't just act but also can talk about the subject when people ask questions. This has become, for me, a very, very valuable way to bring the exhibits to life for people. Miss Barton, damaged soldiers gasp in my arms. Miss Clara Barton, please, please tell my mother that I fought hard, please. Tell her that I didn't run, that I ain't yellow. You will tell her yourself soon enough, I inform them brightly, but frequently we speak not the truth to spare them anguish. What loss, what horrific loss, families ripped asunder, violence, the great cost of limb, of sight, of heart and hope. It is as oppressive as steel striking stone. My character is Clara Barton, and uh, she was one of the first women who was allowed on the battlefield to care for uh, men who were injured, uh, essentially. And she solicited for donations uh, from her hometown in Massachusetts and drove a, a wagon of medical supplies throughout different camps to help uh, the soldiers. To truly put myself in her shoes, I think, is very challenging, especially because she was somebody who was absolutely selfless. She would stay up for days to care for people. She was exhausted. I can imagine how tired she was at this point when I'm doing my scene. And what she saw was pretty terrible. Uh, the injuries during the Civil War were, uh, I can't imagine that. And I, it's very hard for me to imagine that and put myself in her shoes when I'm doing the scene. Co-production manager and director Harriet Lynn talks about the audience experience. They have a chance to really focus on a person today who is taking that story and making it right in front of them feel very real, very connected. It, it, it kind of makes the walls talk. And through their voices and their characterizations, people get much more involved and then they can also appreciate the other things that they're seeing in the museum. So it's complementary, and uh, more and more people, I think, are becoming aware of this kind of phenomena happening and what it does do for the visitor experience. The ones we're doing at the present are the Pratt Street Riots, Harriet Tubman, Christian Fleetwood. He became a soldier in the Union Army when they allowed uh, African Americans to participate, and he was one of the first to uh, be awarded the Medal of Honor. We also do a very controversial character, Mr. John Wilkes Booth. And a lot of people may not know, but his family and he w were also from Maryland. Clara Barton is uh, the one I'm working on right now and will be a part of our group of characters. To help bring these characters to life, Harriet works closely with costumer yeah, Nora train, Worthington. You know, the collaborative process of theater is one of the things that's the most energizing of all because you don't have to invent everything out of your own imagination. You are working with a script and many of your influences in costuming are going to come from the script and then how that script is going to be interpreted by the director. And then of course you have your fellow collaborators in a theater production of lighting, sound, set design. In a museum setting, your collaborators are really the director, the history itself, and the actor. 
And those are the things that you have to bring together as the costumer in this kind of setting. I've been awake for days, feeling lightheaded, ill, pressing forward through union lines of men, driving my wagon of medical supplies, donated by Northern patrons. I was only just given permission by Surgeon General William A. Hammond to travel to the front lines of battle. And when I arrived at the edge of this one, I quickly surveyed the scene. I asked director Harriet Lynn how the exhibits tie in with the living history performances. The process is, I think, a very creative process. And the research is primary. And the words are primary. So then the, my job as the director is to take those words and bring them to life on the actor. So I have to really look at the material, look at what we're trying to say, and find the best way to tell the story in that space. So I'll give an example. Uh, it's an obvious one that the Christian Fleetwood story, which is about saving the flag, saving this extraordinary flag that was made for him for this particular unit he was with, um, is actually in our exhibit. So there you have this wonderful flag. We even have a beautiful reproduction of it in its full glory that we use. And so that's a perfect place. Couldn't be better. Now with the Harriet Tubman story, Harriet Tubman, a lot of people of course know about the Underground Railroad, which is certainly a part of the story that we tell. But I wanted uh, to get people to understand this woman who was also a spy, who was also a nurse during the Civil War, and was also uh, actually ahead of a commando raid, uh, which I think is pretty extraordinary, um, during the Civil War. So I thought the best way to tell the story is to have her lead the, view, uh, the visitors on a so-called journey through the exhibit so that they were feeling not quite saying we're going on the Underground Railroad, but understanding what it would be like to follow this woman. Uh, the Clara Barton, for example, uh, is a perfect example because there we have this um, uh, area where the medical and the bloody war, that we call it, uh, that's uh, happened, which is a very, very, very costly war here of, of uh, blood and treasure, of course. And so there we have this ambulance uh, replica that they used during the Civil War days. And so she's right there in that setting, perfectly poised, and also enough room that people can still walk around, they can sit and see at various vantage points. And then if they just want to move on, uh, they can do that too. The booth is obvious, because we have this great John Wilkes Booth area, and uh, I wanted to have a feeling not only we use it in the scene as if he's entering the box, to, for that fatal moment, but I also use that scene to set up that he's in the barn and now he's the captured animal. He's the captured person um, where they're coming in. So he's cornered and we actually visually use that corner as he's cornered in the barn. The Maryland Historical Society players perform on Saturdays and Sundays only. To learn more, visit www.mdhs.org. I'm Mark Beachy for the Maryland Theatre Guide. Have a theatrical day.